Good afternoon, Ian. Oh, good afternoon, Paul. Lovely. Thank you for joining me uh, this afternoon. It's been so great to chat to so many people across Somerset. And uh, obviously, we've not, not met before. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on your business, but I'd be interested, and for the people that are watching, uh, to tell me a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yes, yeah, certainly. We're, um, we're an English-based company. We, we started up in 1986 by my father, who was the founder. Uh, and we did a lot of research and development in the late 70s into, into water-based technology. Uh, and all, then all of the research and development and manufacturing we do uh, here in our cheddar factory and we distribute our coatings worldwide. Wonderful. So um, nice family business and say so nice uh, location there in Cheddar. And um, I've been talking to people, you know, for the last 18 months about how obviously this time has impacted us. And in so many different ways, I've spoken to people on how COVID's impacted them. Uh, I wanted for yourselves, um, what impact has it made to your business? I think certainly as an industry, our, our industry has been extremely lucky in the fact, obviously, that we've been able to carry on um, unlike a, a lot of other industries. Uh, certainly in, in our industry, because we supply um, construction, which also means we supply um, certain NHS trusts for construction hospitals and buildings, um, we, we've actually um, in, been very lucky and had a status where we've been able to carry on working through COVID. So although, although it's been very challenging, and I, I certainly go over what, what's happened, um, we only actually shut down for four days. And, and wow. apart from that, we've, um, we, we've carried on working throughout. Oh, that's great then. Let's, let's say it's been able to continue and it, because so many businesses have obviously just sort of stopped. So you're been able to do that and, uh, you know, and trade throughout. So, so how did it sort of going back, I guess, to kind of February 2020, um, when it, what impact did it make first of all, or was there an element of where you had to adapt things to continue working? Or? I think certainly for us, the, um, and, the, and the same for everybody really, um, everybody knew that there was, there was something about, um, and then it, it was all pretty sudden. You saw, you saw kind of lockdowns and things happening elsewhere. And pretty much everybody kind of was saying kind of very naively now that, you know, that's not going to happen here and this sort of thing. Um, and then obviously it, it was building up to it. It was then announced on the television. Um, and then that's when we shut for four days. Uh, but then we, we have a, an extremely good governing body, which is the uh, British Coatings Federation. Uh, and they actually, they actually speak to Parliament MPs, etc., um, to get the guidelines for our industry. So, so because of again, uh, who we supply in the supply chain, we were then able to reopen with, well, I said within four days. Um, I mean, the main the main problem for us was the fact that uh, reopening under extremely strict guidelines of um, of obviously COVID, and then learning how how to keep people apart, how to keep people working separately, uh, and everything else. Uh, like everybody having to get back to work wa wasn't very easy. So, so we had a core amount of staff back to begin with. Um, literally, uh, I think it was about six of us. And at that time, four of us lived in the same house. So myself, right. my wife, two children who worked for me. Um, and, uh, and that was four. And then there was two other people, uh, my factory manager and the uh, factory supervisor, the second in charge. And, um, and, that's, and that's all that was here. Um, I think that when we built up a plan of building people back gradually um, and doing it extremely safely. So um, like, a, like, a, like a lot of people, um, COVID affected everybody in, in different ways, uh, business and personally. Um, it, it affected my family um, in a personal way right at the beginning um, when everything was at its, heart, at, its, at its worst really for, for people not knowing what was happening um, and a family member passed away. So I, I feel that because of that, um, we then adapted far more stringent 
systems and strictly, and we still operate that system now um, compared to other businesses and other businesses I speak to. People seem to be, um, I am generalizing, a lot more relaxed about it. So um, certainly um, people have to work, they still have to work two meters away from each other. Um, yeah. Every every machine and pumping station um, has to be operated by one person. So we had to get more workstations in to actually get the same output out. Um, every person um, has to wear a mask at all times. I've removed mine, um, which is which is here, um, because I'm sat down at a boardroom with nobody else in the room. So our office staff work within surrounded screens, and as soon as they stand up, they still have to wear a mask. Um, for us, when um, uh, everything is lifted on the 19th, um, we won't be changing our policy. It's still two meters. Everybody still has to wear a mask. Um, we have contractors that come into the building, they're temperature checked and um, have to wear a mask and that will carry on. Everybody does flow tests um, twice a week um, and has random temperature checks. So uh, I think by sticking to very strict guidelines, um, we haven't had um, issues where, where people have been close to people um, within a work situation um, to, for the spread of COVID or having to shut down or anything. So um, I think um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily how I think we would have run it if, if those things hadn't happened within the family. But I think that put us on a path which then meant that the business actually carried on running very effectively because of what happened at the beginning. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear about the, the, the family loss and say it's, it's impacted people so, so many different ways. And, and I guess, like, like you said, with the 19th of the July going forwards, that it's kind of become keeping on lots of the ways that we've had to adhere to doing things in certain ways. And that's become normal for people to say now to work behind screens or a lot of that's going to continue. I was interested and I was looking at your really nice website, by the way, for your business and, uh, and the social media um, part of it. And I love the... The, you said it's family business. I love the fact that it, it celebrates the family business and uh, your father on there, and that, you know, that, that comes through with the videos. And um, I wondered about sort of trading abroad because you've got, obviously, the products that you make, you've got outlets across Europe and worldwide, haven't you, that, that you trade abroad with? Yeah, so certainly, obviously, in, in amongst all of this, there was Brexit and everything. Yeah. Uh, and certainly for, for us, um, as, as a business, we've always done very well with export. Our, our, our coatings and our specialist products are very unique, uh, not just in the UK, but worldwide. Um, they're, they're very technologically advanced um, in the industry. Um, I know a lot of, kind of manufacturers kind of say these things, but uh, yeah. we, we manufacture ranges of products which are very specific. Um, to very certain needs, but then could also be used in a much wider spectrum. So because um, we've always done very well um, in and outside of Europe, we actually um, supply uh, more products outside of Europe than inside of Europe. So, so right. for us, the whole, the whole issue of, of Brexit, and again, it, it was very lucky for us as a business, um, and you know, because of circumstances, uh, it didn't actually affect us. We, we, we've shipped for 15, 12, 20, over 20 years, for instance, the US, um, the Middle East, the Far East. Um, you know, we, we were shipping products into the Gaza Strip when it was being bombed. Um, okay. Okay. Certainly when, when, when you're used to this and you're used to the custom system and tariff codes, etc., it's just exactly the same everywhere else in the world and you just do the same for Europe now. So apart from I think um, software companies being um, very unprepared and slow to make it easier for small to medium sized businesses, for instance, Sage, which I'm sure um, a lot of people will be familiar with, um, they, they promised updates um, on their system to allow our, um, our IME numbers and all this sort of thing and shipping to Ireland, etc. cetera. Um, and then when it actually came to it, uh, they hadn't changed the software and we had to make, we had to put it in generic slots in the software to make it work, um, which you don't have to use those numbers when exporting to the rest of the world. So I think a lot of, a lot of problems has been caused by 
um, inefficient large software companies uh, and the smallest and medium-sized businesses has, uh, has suffered and paid the price for that. But, um, but apart from that, for us, uh, it, it, it's been a very straightforward process, really. All of all of us, said, all of our stuff in a, in our computer systems had tariff codes, etc. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it was it, it wasn't any any extra work for us, which which again, as as an existing exporter, um, was just a, you know certainly a lucky thing for us. Yeah, no, that's well, that's great to hear, and very very interesting to hear that that sort of side of things because I've spoken to people that uh, a toy manufacturer, sorry, no, a toy shop, sorry, locally to us. That buys a lot of stuff, imports lots of you know products that, and he said you know with the obviously the Suez Canal there was that, that cargo yes. ship stuck with, all, and he said uh, you know coming to Christmas so I've got a, a a pallet full of um, uh, puzzles that are stuck in the Atlantic somewhere, uh, and he said the little uh, the little tins of paint for your um, you, you know the what they call the planes and the things that you make the little kits, yeah 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 he said them a lot of them are made in India. And he was unable to buy them, or there's a shortage of stuff, and it's the it's the ripple effect, isn't it? You, you, you it hear is. about it. I mean, certainly we um, we we bring in raw materials from a, a lot of our raw materials are from Europe, um, but we bring in raw materials from a number of different parts of the world. And uh, the Suez Canal, actually, um, we had uh, two forty foot containers stuck in there at the time. Um, for raw materials, uh, but also certainly the I think the big problem has been the fact of um, the the shipping companies mothballed uh -huh. a load of ships in the pandemic because they foreseen the the slowdown of movement of goods around the world. Well, of course, the actual opposite happened, and there was an increase in movement of products around the world because it coincided with Brexit and, and a lot of large companies overstocking to cover for that. So it's just a smoke, snowball effect. So, so for instance, um, some of our raw materials we pay to fly in, um, which is a, um, a, a massive price difference mm. uh, rather than bringing them in by sea. Um, some of our some of our distributors in different parts of the world we've had to fly them stock. Um, because because boats and containers weren't available, um, and certainly um, the purchase of shipping containers to get stuff around the world uh, was a fairly fixed price, and now it's just a bidding process. And a lot of the time, you have to fight to get one. Uh, and it, it's 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 actually trying to explain this to the kind of the, the end user and consumer. Uh, this this is why the price hike is happening. Um, and I think uh, a lot of the um, unexplained thing is it actually hasn't really hit the consumer. Yes, shelf prices have gone up slightly, um, but it's the it's the distributors, the sellers, the manufacturers within that country which are taking the bulk of the hit. Yeah, no, I say it's interesting to hear that that side of things, and and all say all the kind of stakeholders involved in in running a business, and, and how delays can happen, and extra costs, supply and demand, and like say with how how things are spending habits changing, ways that people are working from home, office spaces. It can be interesting with uh, you know lots of the buildings when people start to return from working from home a lot more, how that's gonna gonna affect things, and um, yeah, I was I was interested to say particularly in the how that would affect you, trade abroad. So you've done done very well, and not been too too affected by that in terms of it. I think yeah, because uh, because we're a manufacturer and not a service um, uh, company sort of thing. It, it we have to have people in the building. We can't operate people working from home. Yeah. Yes. Someone um, doing high-level accounts can work from home. Uh, financial director has worked more from home. Um, but certainly a lot of people, they have to be in the building to physically even do the paperwork on, on a computer, let alone manufacture the product. So um, certainly uh, to begin with, it was only a later stage that we split the office up into screens. At the beginning, we had one person working in a boardroom, we had one person in a main office, one person um, in a director's office, they were in completely separate rooms. Um, but certainly, yes, uh, I, I think for businesses that uh, are able to let their staff work from home, I, I, I do believe there's going to be a shift, but I, I think there's going to be a, a, a bigger uptake on it than people are saying at the moment, for people wanting to go back into the working environment, in, in, into the actual business, for the actual uh, 
toing and throwing and, and connections with people that although on video chat, etc., you get a bit of it, you, you do lose a lot of the, the whole work ethic and, and, and environment, I, I, I think. So I, th I think at the end of it, there'll be more people working from home than the beginning, but I think a lot more people will, that will go back to work than I, what we're being led to believe at the moment. Yeah, I think I think the same really because you say there's those and there's important sort of water cooler moments for people that where some of those conversations that take place that that wouldn't you know wouldn't happen if it's if it's cut off from a meeting. It's 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 been great for people to upskill and to as a sort of temporary thing, but we're kind of creatures of habit of wanting that, aren't we? To to be talk face to face and and move about a bit really, and uh, you know being it's not healthy to be at home. Uh, all the time. I mean, I mean, I'm quite fortunate. I just need a laptop and an internet connection. I can work from home. I can work in the office where where I am today. Um, oh, I was working from my car one day because it was just nice to drive somewhere nice and nice and get a great view. Um, yeah. But you know, you're in a, you're in a beautiful part of uh, of Somerset there in, in Cheddar, and um, the, so the the company you said is that originally your your father set it up, and I said I like I like the fact with the website you you've you know, you've got nice instruction videos on how to use the products. And I wondered if there was, you know, obviously lots of things you said have, have kept the same. You've had to make adaptions in terms of work and operations within them and having to physically be there. Um, but I wonder if there's other opportunities that you've spotted or to, to take forward or change things or things you've noticed. I, cer I certainly think the the thing of, and again, it's, I think it's for businesses to... Um, politely put it across rather than uh, upsetting people. I think the, the whole British made thing um, has really come into its own um, with, with Brexit and with COVID and lockdown. Um, I think the two together, people really want, uh, we found uh, uh, before this, our industry in coatings, uh, a, lot, a lot comes from Europe and this sort of thing, and, and quite a bit comes from the US. Um, into, into, into imports, into stores. Uh, we've certainly seen a big increase in people wanting to buy British. I think they know they can get hold of it. Um, if it's made within the UK, it's then the manufacturer in the UK's problem to get the raw materials. Uh, rather than the store, even the store chain, rather than the independent store, um, trying to get those goods in. Um, I think I think the just in time and supply uh, of, of UK manufacturers are able to get around a lot of problems that are happening in the world because they're in the country that they're supplying. And I I, I hope that the the extra sales and growth and the the wanting to buy British doesn't drop off when everybody starts to get back to normal. Again, I, th I think it will be higher than it was. I think there will be a bit of a drop off, but I, I do think that the, the loyalty of buying British will be will be bigger, remain bigger. No, I definitely agree with you on that. It's sort of, yeah, the, the, the whole Brexit thing. And they're saying it's, it's the change that people are having to change, change how they work. And like say different suppliers, there's, there's been opportunities for people. I think we've, we, there's lots of businesses that have always done things certain ways. And when this sort of pulled away and you say, oh, actually, if we're, if we're using somebody in Europe, like you said, but actually we've got some more, you know, someone right on our doorstep, there's there's the benefits of working with them. You know, there's less less of the risk. And I said some of the business I've spoke to where they the manufacturers are dotted all over Europe, um, a kitchen manufacturer, for instance, I work with. And you're saying, you know, I'm, again, with the, the best of British, one of the British kitchens companies he works with, there's a big rise in, in people buying the British kitchens. And we've tailored his marketing to push that because there is that need for it um, and because there's been a bit of a, a delay in the manufacturing because again the ripple effect of then getting supplies to make the products to get them here the whole supply chain is it's 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 allowed people to to you know to look at it a bit differently and i think certainly for yourselves i agree that there is going to be a bit of a dip but it will be a once the kind of it's going to take a while for things to settle down to find its new way of what it is. But I think for yourself, I think there's good opportunities there for, for growth, certainly. I think lots of other businesses as well. There is certainly, yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly in our business, the, the biggest people that have been affected uh, for employees has been our sales uh, staff that are out on the road. So, yeah. Uh, Again, that was the kind of closest I got to dealing with people that um, couldn't go out and were furloughed for a period of time because the customers refused to see them. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, but certainly now now they're back out on the road and, and seeing people. Um, I think that that that's another connection that they're being made uh, about what's happened and the advantages of, 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 of buying British. And certainly, I think for a lot of businesses, it might not be buying British, it might be buying locally. If it's if it's a business um, that is, you know, their, their market, for instance, is Somerset uh, and uh, and other other businesses outside of the area um, ha have been supplying that in a bigger way. I think the, the, the customer base within Somerset would then look more locally um, as as people have looked kind of UK to us rather than worldwide. Yeah, I think I think that's another great another great point which I agree with and, and say the real buy local thing, look after each other, the community kind of feels being something that's popped up all over and um, you know, um, particularly like I'm from, you know, I'm from Minehead originally and a lot of like buying local, a lot of buying independent, uh, you know, I think there'll be a, a, a rise of, of certainly people buying more local and like hopefully because obviously there was a big thing with people buying online because it was not being able to get out there there was you know looking back now i think well you know the, the services that we were using and when i look back now to when there was the whole you know shortage and you know the toilet roll thing now this seems like a, a weird one now that that yeah, yeah, yeah. scenario seems a bit absurd now looking at that um but i think people are i think it's it's taking those positives like you say buying local buying you know keeping things in somerset and i think it's uh you know we've got some fantastic businesses in this county and and flying the flag for somerset and building on on you know what we've got here to offer and shouting out about it a bit more and i guess as well it's it's br the brand of somerset as well as developing that um you mentioned like you know buying uh, you know keep buying it local but, but having businesses that work together more there's been a lot of collaborations where people have seen uh, opportunities to do things together that's that's been something that i've i've particularly enjoyed seeing people team up to do things um but no it's 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 a great story to to hear how you've sort of fared through it and yeah the other side of it because you say sometimes it's it's you know as somebody that that exports is 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 that you know that that kind of um you know how that's been for yourself as opposed to importing for some people and uh, not yeah, certainly where we uh, we do feel as if we're in the minority um it 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 uh, it's it's quite hard to um to find many exporters these days you know i'm 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 sure you know they're they're, they're out there but certainly the, the normally the business i speak to are, are bring a lot of goods in so it's certainly uh, we are we are in demand and it is it is it is a thing that i think um people want to buy and certainly through europe as well with 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 some company, some countries, sorry, certainly wanting British and English goods, etc., uh, and they're very keen on having, you know, made in the UK with a Union Jack on it and this sort of thing. Um, uh, and depending on what country you're dealing with, you know, wants it more prominent than not. Um, okay. But yeah, certainly, it, it, it's, it's certainly a good thing to push. I think. Yeah, well, that's very interesting, and so how that's going to develop going forwards. And I say it's going to be a little while. Like you said, you're keeping the workstations as they are, the two meter rule and those kind of things. Sort of as that for the rest of the year, is there is there any is there any sort of things that you're doing going to be doing different in terms of products or? or? I say uh, for us, we've um, we've looked at it and uh, certainly distancing and that sort of thing. We're now reviewing. The first time we'll review it is the first of August, and that will be reviewed on the first of each month. Yeah. Uh, certainly on products. Uh, we 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 spent certainly quite a lot of time in lockdown doing a lot of research and development on a few new lines. Um, we we we've updated and put a new laboratory in. Um, with and um, we've we've changed all the machines out to state of the art testing systems for coatings and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's all been put in this year, mainly to be able to deal with uh, customers uh, in this country without having to get help externally in, in, in Europe and across the world really, where in the past we might have gone outside of the UK for testing and this sort of thing. We wanted to bring it in house so we had it ourselves and under control. Yeah, oh great, well, that's a great. That's certainly, that's certainly probably the biggest the biggest change that we've had because of this, I would say. Yeah, great. Well, well thank you so much. It was so uh, great to talk to you and hear how your business has fared through it and the opportunities there. and. Um, 
Uh, thank you for your time. Um, it's been great to talk to you. I wish you uh, and the rest of the team a continued success uh, with the business and say fly the flag uh, proudly for Somerset. So thank you very much. Yep. All the best. Thank you. Bye.